So today I'm going to be making a, a burl uh, table with a, a stand. Um, so this is the burl in question. It's been in my shop for at least three years, uh, drying, and uh, the person that had it before me had it for quite a while as well. I'm not exactly sure how long, but um, how do I know it's ready? It's because the edges are peeling. I can actually remove the bark that's all around. Like just like I can move it with my fingers, and when I got it, it, it was not removable. So uh, I'll be able to start doing that now. Uh, so uh, what I was, I was told it was a yellow cedar burl. So you can see a, a bit of the 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 grain pattern or the burl pattern on it. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, try to even out just some uh, like saw marks and stuff. So. I uh, got my uh, plane very, very sharp and uh, I close the, the trope a bit and what I'm going to do is just some light passes to take the height down and then what I can do as well is use my level and I'm going to make sure it's straight before I even get started with the sander because I, I don't want to get a lot of dust everywhere. And, like the the plane might be just enough for the the finish as well. Another thing, uh, I'll be removing this one here because like you can actually put epoxy in them, and, but like on the other side, that's all that stuff's going to be removed. So uh, I want I want to um, make sure it's straight through, and then I'm going to have an exposed hole in in it, with, which I think it's going to be pretty nice. So uh, we'll get started. a piece of oak to drive the bark out of the hole. The reason being I don't want any uh, sharp edges digging into the burl itself. So uh, and later on you'll see me using uh, an old gouge that I have. It's pretty dull and I, I like to keep it that way because uh, that uh, prevents in this project to uh, dig into the wood as well. So it's just removing uh, the bark without leaving marks on the actual burl. I've got the rough sanding done on the outside, on the top of the table. Uh, now it's time to work on the underside. And on the underside, I'm, I have uh, those little prickly things that burls most birds have. And I, I want to get rid of those. Uh, so I, I'm going to use a little grinder and grind them off and sand them nice. So here I'm making a close-up to show you guys why I'm using the card scraper. I don't know if you can see, but there's a few scratches left. Uh, I guess they were from the, the the saw that they used to to cut it in apart. But uh, there's a few of them. So what I'm doing is I'm using the card scraper, and that's going to help me keep everything nice, straight, and uh, even. And then I'm just going to go to the bottom of those uh, micro scratch. So yeah, I think my scraper needs a bit of a sharpening, so I'll get back to you guys a bit later.
So here you can see uh, that even though I remove all the prickly points, I still have the overall shape of them, which is going to give the table a lot of character. I'm also using a little uh, steel brush uh, and a file and also a little hook, like a dentist hook, to clean every little uh, corner that needs to be cleaned. So I just added some uh, lacquer thinner on it just to see where I would have to uh, to sand a bit more for the, the scratches and turns out that uh, it, it looks all good. So uh, I've done pretty much like it's sanded at the bottom. I clean all of that so I have to kind of finish sanding and, and brush it a bit more but uh, uh, next thing is going to be the stand, and the stand is uh, this piece here of uh, of a red cedar. It's got a kind of a twist into it, and obviously it's it's aged because it's been in the basement of a of a, my wife's uncle for a long, long time. So uh, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, clean that up. There's some paint. There's some. Uh, so that's gonna be the next part. So it's always a good practice to make sure that the uh, assembly table is level off the ground so that way it minimizes the risk of having a crooked table. Uh, I just spent a few minutes and I did so, so I made sure it was uh, level across this way and I also made sure it was level across the other way. Now that that's done, I just have to take the pedestal and uh, place it on my... Uh, workbench and then I'll just level across this way which I can already tell I have to remove from the front here and I'm gonna level the other way as well and then that tells me I have to remove from the edge as well here just to bring it back down a bit and then when that's done I'll be able to uh, put the top on and that's gonna give me a level fit So I got it to a point that uh, it's level. Uh, all I have to do now is uh, turn the pedestal and the top tabletop to decide which way I'm gonna assemble it. So uh, that's gonna be my next step. And when that's done, I just have to make myself some reference mark and uh, I'll, I'll be putting my, uh, my joinery inside to attach both of them. So when it was right side up, I made myself some uh, some marks to be able to realign the pedestal where I want it. Uh, now that was done, I made myself a little template on where this was sitting and then I, I remade the same mark on it. So my template is done, I, I'm going to be using a dowel to put in the pedestal and that's going to anchor the tabletop to it. Uh, so all I have to do now is uh, mark where I want to have my holes drilled and then uh, use that template, flip the template over and then use it on the tabletop to mark where the holes are going to be and that this should line up my dowels properly.
So I've added two holes to be able to see where my mark was here and here on the underside. So I'll just mark those two here as well. So that's the dry fit. Uh, it, it fits very nicely. It's nice and tight, as you can see. Um, so now I'm gonna sand off my pencil marks on both pieces and I'll be ready for the glue up. So at this point I want to apologize for the poor uh, focus on uh, the glue up part. Uh, unfortunately when you do a glue up it's not something you can do a, a second take off and I realized the camera was out of focus after the glue up was all done. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm, I, I applied the glue and I'm uh, using uh, those straps to use as clamps around the, the workbench. So at this point I have the straps all tight so what I want to do is remove the gap underneath. Uh, I also made myself some little wood shims or pieces they are the same thickness for me to uh, level uh, over top of the uh, of the straps and I'm re removing the glue squeeze outs so uh, I want to be very fussy here for uh, my level because I won't have another chance at it So the finish I'm using here is tongue oil. Uh, it's the first of many coats to follow. In between coats, I'll be sanding with 600 grit sandpaper to uh, create a smoother finish. So here are some pictures of that uh, yellow cedar burl table that I just completed. My family and I will be able to enjoy this table for many, many years to come in our living room. Uh, this was a, a very fun project and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hopefully in the future you'll stop by again for uh, the upcoming projects that I'm going to be posting. So until then, have a great day.